assembly. I, um, I see that you're all in your casual-esque clothing, um, so I hope you're going to enjoy this break from your midterm studying. Um, with that, Secretary Muller, could you take attendance? Yeah, uh, so Representative Bagat. <laughs> Representative Brown. Representative Han. Proxy. Representative Wang. Uh, Representative Volano. Representative In. Representative Tabashnik. Representative Oaputi. Representative Redensic. Representative Smith. <coughs> Representative Dorbeck. Representative Stephen Lee. Uh, Representative Law. Representative Hoffman. Representative Lupton. Okay. Representative Cummins. Representative Zoltan. Representative Renard. Representative Schillow. Representative Beckett. President Representative Fernandez. President Bode. Representative McEachern. President Bode. Representative Rosenberger. Bode. Representative Irizari. President Bode. Representative Ian Eddy. Representative Lendell. Bode. Representative Hong. Bode. Representative Park. Bode. Representative Yuan Lee. Representative McKee. President Representative Schloff. President Representative Gallup. President Representative Sade. President Representative DeBoss. President Representative Fitch. President Representative Singh. President Representative Cruz. President Representative Zhou. Colin, do you want a proxy for a tad beer? Uh, she's coming. Okay. Uh, represent Representative Grialis. Representative Leo Lee. President uh, Skyler Thompson. Masagawa. Hmm. Joe Wang. Uh, Neil O'Brien. Colin Lux. Colin Williams. Uh, Navin Ar Arumu Kasami. Uh, Akil Murthy. Uh, Speaker Pulaski. Present. Uh, Treasurer Shah. Uh, Treasurer Moser. Uh, Parliamentarian Brubaker. Present. Uh, Parliamentary, or er, Vice President Maloney. President uh, Vice President Bell. President Bode. Vice President Hamilton. President Bode. Vice President Downey. President Bode. Vice President Agarwal. President Bode. President Wynn. President Bode. Do we have any guests with us tonight? If you could please stand up so we can recognize you. <laughs> I'm Katie Seymour. I'm here representing Teacher America. Okay. And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Wynn. So before I begin my report, um, welcome. This is the, I guess, last GA before your break, fall break. So don't cry too much because we won't be meeting next week because Tuesday you'll have off. However, I want to make sure that you guys are fed because I'm pretty sure you're all starving because you've been studying and locked up in your room. Um, in the back, there is a box and that box is actually um, the food that is going towards midterm study break. However, I will allow GA um, to go and grab food during this uh, session. So I don't know if Representative Fitch and Sabe could go ahead and grab a few boxes and kind of just rotate it around, kind of just have it shuffle around. People grab whatever you'd want. Um, but also, that's a reminder that our midterm study break session is tonight in KSL. So um, please stop by and support the Academic Affairs Committee. They will be uh, there kind of getting surveys out to students, asking them for their concerns, as well as kind of just feeding the population. Um, with that, I'll go straight to my board report. 
The first item you see there are the caucus email list. Uh, most of you are not aware, but we do have official USG email lists for each caucus. Um, I am on there, as well as uh, Speaker Pulaski and Secretary Moeller <coughs> and VP um, Maloney. So please use these email lists when you are trying to contact each other so that we are aware of what's going on. If we can somehow help, we will, and um, kind of give our input at that time. But otherwise, this is also for, uh, I guess, organizational memory documents as well. So we want to make sure that we uh, keep records of what you guys have done as a caucus, and we wouldn't be able to do so if you used random lists that were not passed on. Um, with that, the last item is the sta student state of the university address. Um, I had my meeting with President Snyder on Monday. We talked about the entire format of the um, event. It should be um, it should be very very similar to last year's if those who were here last year remembered. But this year it will be in Strosacker. There is going to be a huge PR push this week. Um, make sure that you tell your friends because this is a very rare and unprecedented <coughs> event that doesn't very often often happen in other universities. So make sure that they know that the Wednesday after fall break that night, the president is taking her time off from her family and coming back to the university to give us a state, a state of the university address just for students. Um, graduate students will be there, professional students will be there. It'd be nice that undergraduate students be there as well, a lot of undergraduate students. Um, please help in what ways you can when uh, the PR committee sends out an email asking that you could change your Facebook uh, picture to their advertisements, please do so. It would be, it would be a, a good help because fall break is kind of a big chunk of missing time that we have with the students. All right, uh, with that, I'm open up to points. Any points for President Wynn? Okay, seeing none. Vice President Agarwal. Hi. So first I want to point out that my meeting is rescheduled this Thursday. I don't want to cancel this time. Uh, rescheduled for 4.30 p.m. in the USD office. This is because um, there's a big meeting that evening for the University Center uh, designs and planning and whatnot that I have to be at. So, but I'm still having my meeting Thursday, 4.30 p.m. USD office. Um, other than that, I've got some people that I have met with and I'm going to meet with. Um, turning your attention to the Village Workout Facility. I know I brought this up a couple of times, but finally have an answer. Um, that facility is only available for residents, um, people living in case housing. Um, and uh, for, as far as the Greek housing goes, I also found out about that today. Greek housing is unfortunately not also allowed to use that facility. Only people who are in case housing can use that facility. Um, other than that, I have two more points I wanted to bring up. Uh, first of all, the Leutner room, the study room upstairs, Jim O'Brien was saying that he hasn't seen very many people using that study space. So please encourage your, your friends, um, if you're living on Northside, to use that space. It is reservable, um, so I'm trying to encourage SIs to use that space as well. The, the website that's listed on the door right now, unfortunately doesn't have the, that study space listed on there for some reason, but I did contact um, Housing about that, and they're gonna get it up there so that you can start reserving that space. Um, one more thing, flu shots. There are free flu shots within the next couple of weeks on several days. I'm going to send out an email to GA with specifically all that information. I believe Colleen might have sent an email about that, but I'll send another one. Um, they're supposed to be in the Village House 4 Great Room and in Nord. So I'll send an email about that. And the student life issue of the week is the Elephant Stairs. Um, if you are a frequent traveler of the Elephant Stairs, you've noticed that they're in very bad condition, bad shape. And so um, part of what I'm trying to do is rewrite a resolution that was submitted in 2008 trying to fix the to fix the, the stairs, the traction strips, and the broken leaking roof. So I'll keep you all updated as far as how that goes. And with that, I'm open to points. Is the, uh, is the speaker aware that the uh, reservable study space in uh, Leutner has two walls that are painted specially so you can use uh, white markers? That's correct. So the, the Leutner study room has floor to ceiling whiteboards on the walls. They look like plain walls, but you can actually use dry erase marker on those walls. And projectors are also coming into that room so that you can hook up your computer. So, wait, could you clarify which, like where is this in Leutner? This is the, the study space that's right next to the dining hall in Leutner. On the first, yeah, on the first level. Not downstairs near L3, this is upstairs. The, the side on the left that's glassy, it's got two walls that are plain white, and you can write with dry erase marker on those walls. Yes, 
Is the speaker also aware that flu shots are $10 and if you don't get them at these special times, you aren't able to get them until next semester at health services? That's so correct. it's a good opportunity to take uh, These ones are of. free. These ones are free. They're $10. Colleen? <laughs> Colleen, all the flu shots are $10. That's what Are these flu shots that you sent an email about those $10 or are those free? <laughs> it's ten dollars for students. Okay, for ten dollars for students. But still you should get your flu shots. Any other points for Vice President Agarwal? Okay. Vice President Downey. Right. My most of my points are in my report, um, but I will say that recognitions for new and existing groups to get ready for mass funding um, is going well. I already have about 50 student groups out of a total 160, and we're not even a week into it yet, so it's going well. Um, I also wanted to bring your attention to one point on my uh, board report about the collegiate link. Something you can do with the groups is you can change the headers and upload different ones so they change and rotate through. Looks kind of cool. Um, so just get that word out, but uh, open to points. Uh, oh. When are we planning on changing the header for collegiate link to <laughs> people who still got a case? <laughs> so exec will meet and talk about that. Any other points for Vice President Downey? Okay. Treasurer Moser, do you have a tip of the week? Um, yes, I do. It's in my board report, and I'm really excited for midterm study break. Open to points. Okay, seeing none. Vice President Hamilton. Uh, midterm study break after this. Uh, come on down if you want free food or more free food. Um, I guess one other thing. Um, I read an article in the New York Times related, related to legacies in Ivy League schools and other really elite institutions. Uh, so I emailed the uh, Vice, Pres Vice President Richard Bischoff uh, to see if there were legacy status in case, and he told me no. And uh, basically in the article they were saying why it's not beneficial, so I was happy to hear we don't have that. I'm open to points. Any points for Vice President Hamilton? Okay, Vice President Bell. Okay, um, so major update here is that the Pizza Olympics has been delayed. It will be taking place November 12th, same time, 1230 yeah. to two, Twin Ballroom. This is simply due to work better for vendors. We'd be able to get 250 pizzas as opposed to 150 pizzas because, I mean, Friday, Halloween, lots of offices have had pizza. So it's just gonna work out better for us. Um, Students say the university address will be Wednesday. Um, I totally slipped my mind bring the flyers, but uh, I'm going to need, you guys will be distributing those to the residential halls. Uh, the flyers will go up on the info boards, so that should be there. Um, we will probably be talking the day before, so it'll be all PR'd, so please come to that, that would be nice. Um, so yeah, we're gonna grind out some Pizza Olympics things, and now to the rep spotlights. Questions. Representative Dorbeck. I have the flyers. Oh, awesome. Vice President Downey. Um, is this date been changed with uh, Arlette? I emailed her already. Okay. So I, it has not been confirmed by Arlette, but uh, there still needs to be some minute changes. But did you also email Nancy and uh, the lady? Tammy? Terry, yeah. I emailed all three of them. So. They told me personally that it's, if you send that email, it's, it's, it's okay. okay. Point of information for the assembly, these are the TWING staff members where the event will be taking place. <laughs> okay, all right, spotlights. Uh, Elena, you wanna come up and help with one? Sure. All right, cool, so I'll do the first one. All right, so this representative spotlight, if they were a cartoon character, would be Tom from Tom and Jerry. All right. Um, 
Favorite movie is Inception. Possibly overrated, but you know, we'll, we'll let that one slide. Um, biggest pet peeve, silence, which I'm seeing a lot of right now. Yes? President Wynn. No. no <laughs> like Inception? Wang? Yeah. Shango, no. No. Representative Shillow? That is also not correct. All right. This, uh, this representative is a psychology major, if that helps. That wouldn't have helped. All right. Um, on the Arts and Science Committee, caucus. I believe so. That's okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. All right, well, well done. Uh, next representative. This representative would, if they're a cartoon character, they would be Emily the Strange, who I have no idea who that is, so. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. Representative Emily Hoffman. Wow. Hmm, who would have guessed that DG would have gotten it? Okay, she has lots of those cartoons. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was. All right, um, Liz, newsletter. Yeah, we have a flash edition going out, um, hopefully tonight, and then next week, the regular edition is still going to go out, so VPs, give me your reports. Thank you. That is all. I'm open to points. <clears throat> yes, ma'am? Will there be a sort of um, like Facebook video kind of uh, advertisement for the State of SUNY University address that happened last year? Because I think that was a big thing. Um, currently, we were not planning a video. We were uh -huh. doing a Facebook, I believe. Okay. But is there a way that we can gather up some representatives during the midterm study break and film a quick video with lots of funny bloopers? We now know from Karen Oy of the library that you can check out cameras for later than three hours. <laughs> Those who are interested in doing a university address will meet me in the KSL library and we will make a video. <laughs> okay, Vice President Maloney. While she's taking the podium, I don't like butterfingers, so the first person to raise their hand. Nope. <laughs> no, it's it was definitely before I said the first person, Katie Zoln raised her hand. You know, I'm pass it back. I have really good purple. Vice President Blunty. Okay, so um so um just, I have two um, announcements, excuse me, to make on behalf of Tom Su, who is the head of the ITS Information Security Department. Um, the first is that October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and um, the Information Security Department is um, having a few uh, seminar type activities um, that students can either attend um, in person or via Adobe Connect um, uh, to learn more about uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and some of the issues surrounding this, um, including um, <coughs> things involving uh, phishing attacks and um, things like that. Um, if you're interested in um, to see the seminar topics, or to sign up for one of them, either in person or via Adobe Connect, you can go to securityaware.case.edu. That's all one word, securityaware.case.edu. And the first of these events um, is tomorrow, on October 13th, um, at noon, in the Tupfer room here, I believe. So um, you can go look at that website for more information about the events and also um, for some general uh, cybersecurity tips. Also, um, Identity Finder is now available on the Software Center for Students. Identity Finder is a program that um, will scan your computer for any personally identifiable information, such as credit card numbers, social security numbers, passport numbers, uh, bank account numbers, anything like that, and let you know that that information is there so that you can do something about it if you don't intend for that to be there. And um, the version for students is new, and um, previously it was only available to faculty and staff, but now it's available to students also. And you can go to the Software Center and download that if you're interested, and I believe that it's starting now. 
So um, that is all I have right now. Open for points. Is the speaker aware? Is the speaker aware that she saved me from a phishing attack this weekend with a fake single sign-on page? Well, I'm pretty cool like that, so. I clicked on it and I was like, no, I need to email Kelly first. And she exactly. Me. I'm I'm pretty cool. Um, again, just reiterating that. So, any other points? No, actually, I don't think I should. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Vice President Maloney. Are there any caucus reports this evening? There should be. Representative Fernandez. You got a couple of things to touch up over here. We have. You can take the podium so we can get you on film so that. Uh, Everyone can see you. It makes it more exciting for the people watching at home. So they can see who's talking. Thank you. So anyway, we just have a meeting October 29th, 1230 with NTN. And we the cornhole event has been rescheduled. So I don't think we'll be having it that same day. I don't know which day it is. I don't remember. Um, we also have the meeting rescheduled for this Thursday at two at seven ten in Fribley because last week nobody showed up. Any points? Any points, Representative Wang? Is the speaker aware that Dean Tian is trying to merge the chemical engineering department and the material science department into one called the soft materials nope. department? Maybe you should, bring, if you want to bring that up and ask him what's up with that. We'll do. Any other else? points for the speaker? Okay, seeing none. Are there any other caucus reports? I'm sorry, I don't know your last name yet. Lee, Representative Lee. Good evening. Um, on December the 3rd, uh, there's going to be an alumni and uh, student um, tea kind of party at the alumni house from 3 to 5 on December 3rd again and it's going to be a chance for the nursing students to meet with the alum and um, uh, figure out networking and um, make some connections and just um, and the alumni wanted to see how the nursing students were doing and their opinions about their um, school life so it's going to be a good chance for the students to get together so yeah. any points for the speaker thank you representative Lee any other caucus reports? Representative Landau. Hi everyone, the Weatherhead Caucus just wanted to uh, tell everyone that they should be expecting an email to other alt caucuses because we had some questions to ask you. And on another note, um, the Weatherhead Caucus has decided to do a chocolate commons which will be just to try to get USG's name out and also just to get some feedback from the Weatherhead students. We decided on a date for that already, so that will be October 27th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And we'll be handing out chocolate products such as chocolate chip cookies, brownies, and hot chocolate, etc. So it should be fun. I'm open points. Any points for Representative Lindo? Thank you. Any other caucus reports? <coughs> Okay, we're now into old business. Um, is there any old business from the assembly tonight? Okay, seeing none, we're now in new business. Um, we have had one resignation for a College of Arts and Sciences representative position. Um, so at this time, um, we can entertain a motion to open nominations for one position within the College of Arts and Sciences. Representative Brown. Okay, so nominations are now open. Um, Representative McCachran. Chelsea Flanagan. Representative Wang. It's okay, we appreciate Ella representatives as well. Any other nominations? Okay, Representative Moore. Uh, I'm sorry, Secretary Moore. For the record, I'm nominating Sarah McCormick. President Wynn. I nominate James Hale. Any other nominations? Okay, and as per our constitution, these will be advertised to the campus community this week, and we will, um, pending the arrival of candidates and letters of intent, um, we can vote to close nominations next week. So email Parliamentarian Brubaker and Secretary Moeller if you have any additional nominations. 
Um, other new business, we will now inaugurate the new representatives. So if you were elected over the previous few GAs and you have not yet taken our USG oath, you can make your way to the front. You know who you are. Come stand up here. Okay, face the camera. Okay. Please reach, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Jason Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. As a representative of the USG. As a representative of the USG. <laughs> to responsibly represent. To responsibly represent. My constituency to the best of my ability. My constituency is to the best of my ability. I promise to faithfully uphold. I promise to faithfully uphold. The Constitution and all appropriate bylaws. The Constitution and all appropriate bylaws. Of the USG. As an elected representative to the USG, as an elected representative to the USG, I further pledge to serve the students of Case Western Reserve University. I further pledge to serve the students of Case Western Reserve <laughs> University with integrity and honesty. With integrity and honesty. Congratulations. It's a big moment if you want to show your parents, it'll be on YouTube in the next couple of weeks. So <laughs> Not a joke. Is there any other new business this evening? Okay, seeing none, we're now into open forum. Again, as a reminder, um, please try to take some measures to make sure we're discussing and debating issues here. Anything that can sol be solved with an email um, or the USG feedback form should be done as such. Representative Wang. So um, the International Planning Committee, led by Associate Provost David Flesher, there has been discussion on... Um, having a required curriculum on like some sort of international education. Now what this means is like it's very similar to the College of Arts and Sciences Global and Cultural Diversity and people such as Vice President Mobley feels that it's essential to have some like have some course similar to this for like the entire university. Um, now obviously there it's very she's saying like in her view there's very flexible options like you could use foreign languages um, or humanities courses and also for students who have done studying abroad who actually who go abroad you know are can be exempt from this requirement so this is something that the International Planning Committee are considering um, to make considering for like suggestions for FISCU and the provost so I don't know what you guys would think about that Vice President Dowie I'm a little curious like Okay, so the requirement would be that they take like um, a humanities course on outside culture, like I've taken Roman history. Would that fill it? I mean, for stuff like that, or would it have to be like a language or a, um, like a, yeah, really active? Well. In my personal opinion, that your Roman history probably would count. You know, just something not like about another culture, essentially, is what they're asking. And it's pretty flexible, too, is what they're asking. Vice President Maloney. Would this um, supersede the global and cultural diversity requirement for College of Arts and Sciences students? Um, I don't I don't know if it'll supersede, but like I think what they're trying to make the argument is saying like a requirement like the global uh, global cultural diversity shouldn't just apply to people from the College of Arts and Sciences. So. Okay. Parliamentarian Drew Baker. Um, Representative Mike, can you elaborate on the uh, Chemi and uh, Materials Science Department's version and what, what that is? Can you elaborate? Um, this was also brought to me, um, brought, it to, brought to my attention during one of the working groups, mm -hmm. like the Education Abroad Working Group, and um, Dean Walkowitz mentioned that Dean Tian wanted to merge chemical engineering department and the material science department. Vice President Downey? It's actually not uh, quite accurate. It's the polymer department polymer. in chemical engineering, and nothing has been set yet. They're in very broad talks about merging it, maybe merging it, pros and cons. It's very minimal at this point. There's okay. nothing really substantial to it. Representative Fernandez? Just point, <clears throat> sorry, just point of information. 
Are they in the same building even? Uh, is that even possible? I believe many of our academic departments transcend multiple buildings on, as the nature of our campus. Vice President Hamilton. Um, I guess I'd just like to say in terms of like that international requirement for the whole school, uh, that wouldn't be somewhat something that would affect any of you in this room uh, because a change in like curriculum uh, only occurs with uh, incoming students. It'd be like similar with the SAGES program that was only implemented in 2005 and students that were still here in 2005 uh, didn't have to take it. Um, so really it's just a, uh, nothing to worry about. It's just your insight on it. Any other points for open forum? Representative Lupton. Yeah, I got a question. Um, who was the, uh, was the arts and science Representative Cecilia Lee resigned. Cecilia Lee. Yes. Okay. And uh, follow up. Uh, how many how many representatives have resigned this year? I don't have a number. We can get that for you. Okay. And then a follow up to that was uh, was was Cecilia Lee? Did she get voted in this year? She was voted in this year before our retreat. Okay. Any other point, Colleen? Regarding the recent occurrences um, at Redford's, there was also sort of a um, issue with online bullying kind of a dupe. So on November 4th, and if anyone else can <coughs> add to this, what we're interested in is what kind of forum would be interesting to you that would explore or discuss the speed at which bullying or notification or public humiliation, the speed at which that it can be disseminated in today's world. And how does that really interface with you? Like what kind of forum would be interesting to you? A debate? A panel? Is there, could I get a little bit of feedback? Can you take a minute or two on this? Um, I promise that I would open it up for discussion. Vice President Maloney. I guess I'm not really sure if a uh debate would be the most appropriate forum because I'm not really sure like what the two sides in that debate would be like I would really highly doubt that anybody well, is freedom of speech. okay all right okay I was like, because I don't think anybody's in favor of cyber bullying right. But, um, yeah, and that's exactly where it was stuck. right I guess maybe a panel like it seems like it would be the format that would make the most sense to me for a discussion about these issues Vice President Hamilton. Um, I actually was sitting in on that committee, which is why I mentioned the uh, the vigil that occurred yesterday for uh, Tyler Clementi and the uh, five other people that committed suicide over the past few weeks. Um, but I guess, like, legality speaking, it varies state to state, but... Um, like cyberbullying isn't illegal yet, but it sounds like it is going to be like focused on in the future in state legislatures. Um, <clears throat> numerous other kinds of things related to that, like actual physical, like interaction, uh, face to face, that's already illegal in many states. Um, but we can talk about it afterwards. Okay. Representative Lupton. Uh, I'd be interested in it. Uh, somebody sent out an email to me last night, I think it was from the IT committee. Uh, somehow I got it, I, I think uh, Andrew Brown sent it up. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it, was a, it was basically a really radical guy talking to, who was it? Um, the basically the entry of U of M. Um, so the president of the student council at U of M. <laughs> Sorry. What? It basically, there was there was like uh, somebody that's really radical freedom of speech that was pretty much hate criming this USG president uh, because he was uh, homosexual, um, and then that debate, freedom of speech, cyberbullying. Like I think it was a really good. Like I, I watched the whole thing. So I mean, if you can find somebody that is passionate.
President Wynn. So hearing from this, I think there's two two things that we could work off of. If you could maybe ask Mayo to bring in someone who would be um, kind of the law or legislative side and ask, ask them to kind of look into the whole aspect of making bullying online legal or not legal. And then the other aspect would be, because um, I've seen this in various uh, forms that online, after these visual events happen in universities, you also have like a place where people can comment on the news. And it's very sad to see that people still comment about, you know, uh, they bully the visuals themselves, like the visual uh, event itself. So I think if maybe you have examples of that, I think that's also very powerful to, to make a statement that people are, even after something like this, national dialogue obviously is, is not happening to that extent. Vice President Maloney. Um, I just actually, before I came to GA, I was reading the news and um, there was a case of a seven-year-old girl, um, also in Michigan, um, who was uh, who's dying of Huntington's disease. And um, I guess they made like some sort of, you know, Facebook group in support of her for like some sort of like uh, toy drive for her or something, and then. Her neighbors, who were angry at her family because of some silly neighborhood dispute that had occurred, started like bullying this support group for a seven-year-old girl dying of a terminal disease. So that's just something else. Um, if I can say one more thing, and you all know I'm a dinosaur, I've been here a long time. Twenty years ago, or even fifteen years ago, during let's say National Coming Out Month or during the period of time it was National Coming Out Day, we faced, it was a, it's almost a cyclical um, time frame of vandalism and chalkings and graffiti on uh, publicity for events. And I remember sitting in rooms just like this and sitting in other community meetings where we were talking about that lack of civility and how these things destroy community and whether it's racist or it's bigoted or whatever, it's just fascinating to me as a dinosaur to see now the same thing. It's the exact same behavior, it's just done in a different climate. Do you know what I mean? Now it's technology, now, and it goes out like that, and it's just so incredibly disruptive. And it's, um, we were talking about the, I think it's Google or someone has a prompt, like a 15 second prompt that before something is sent, what's it called, there's a word for it, where you get to take it back. If you Extend it, undo. What's it called? Extended undo. Yes, yes. And um, just anyway, so I just thought, you know, it's just, it hasn't changed. It's just changed how it's being done. And I think the examination I have is that this is so far more disruptive because it's far more outreaching. I mean, Kelly, like Kelly's example, you know, I mean, thousands of people hit it in the first five minutes. Any other points for open forum? Representative Fernandez. This is something that um, a friend of mine asked me to bring into GA and the kiosks, it's actually for student life, the kiosks in the uh, south side are really vandalized. Is there anything we can do about that? It looks really bad. The one by the elephant stairs. Representative Sultan. Um, I was kind of curious, I know this is not um, campus property, but is there any, is security being increased in the area of the triangle after the two bank robberies occurred, like right in the same area around the same time frame? Because Representative McCacken and I were actually like in that area, I don't know, we just sort of like realized today walking that it's kind of an unsafe area and I walk that area every day and never really see any police around Cornell. President Wynn. I actually uh, ride my bike around there late at night several times, and I have seen an officer on the Segway um, going down that road, that road. but um, I wouldn't know whether or not they actually have made a point to, so I think VP Agarwal will be looking into that, so she will let you know. 
Representative Sultan? Uh, I have another point. I don't eat at Leutner that often, but I've been <laughs> hearing from tons of people who do that it's L3 is like really no longer a fast food option because of the decreased hours that Leutner is open and around dinner time it's just crazy to try to go in there. And I think a lot of people try to go to L3 now in place of eating at Leutner for dinner. And that's just hour long wait for like a pizza. So I was just wondering, I know we already talked to him about the hours, but I don't know if we should bring that back up. Vice President Bell. I actually went there last, uh, last week, I believe it was, and much to my dismay, they actually forgot my first order. I realized it's about 40 minutes later, I'm sitting there, quite crowded, quite annoyed, and uh, finally placed another order, only for, uh, what happened was there was an order, 315 or whatever. I'm sitting there, you know, I was waiting there, sitting there for a while, looking at it, guy just takes it, grabs it, throws it in the trash can, and says, hey, uh, my order was 315. He's like, oh, I got you right now. Grabs my, my meal, gives it to that guy. Then he had to put another chicken on just for me to get my meal. So it took me like an hour just to get a meal, and I was just thoroughly angered. I, I don't know. That's just my experience. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they just need to look into the system. Representative Sabe. Yeah, like as a freshman, like regarding the previous point, I know that I, along with a lot of other people I eat with, would eat at Leutner like if it was just open half an hour, an hour later, but we're kind of forced to go into L3 because there's no other option. Any other points for open forum tonight? Seeing none, we're now into announcements. Oh, I'm sorry, our advisor's report. Let's skip over that one. This is all the advice I have to you. This weekend I want you to eat really, really good home-cooked meals or if you're home, if you're here and you can't Go have lots of fried foods today. Enjoy the weather. It's going to be beautiful and really get lots and lots of sleep. That's it. Okay, so we're now into announcements. Um, Ms. Seymour, would you like to address the assembly at the front? It would be probably be easier for you. I see all these shiny faces here. Thank you for your patience just now. Um, first, I wanted to thank you guys for giving me the time to come in today. Mine's a little bit of a longer announcement, so bear with me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Katie Seymour, and I'm a senior undergraduate here at Case Western. And I'm also Teach for America's campus campaign coordinator at Case this year. Um, I'm gonna start these sign-in sheets going around. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a minute to fill it out while I'm speaking, I would really appreciate it. We've had great core members come from Case year after year. We have 14 in classrooms right now, so we like to keep track of who we talk to. So as I said, I'm here to talk to you about Teach for America, which is a national organization working to solve educational inequity. We recruit outstanding college graduates, such as yourselves, to commit to teaching two years in a high-need rural or urban school district across the country. Our teachers, or core members as we call them, are employed by the school district so they receive full salary and benefits during the two years they're in the classroom. I want to share some numbers with you that illustrate the stark reality of the, ed of the nation's edu education system today. First, consider the Shaker Heights School District. Here, the average ACT score is 23, and over 94% of students graduate high school on time. Next, think about the Cleveland Public School District, just a few miles down the road. Here, the average ACT score is just 18, and only 54% of students graduate high school on time. These neighboring communities, just a few miles apart, yield vastly different results. And the achievement gap isn't unique to Cleveland either. In fact, students when they're just nine years old in low-income communities are already three grade levels behind their wealthier peers. So this means that fourth grade students in the low-income communities aren't reading Harry Potter like they should be, but are instead stuck on C-spot run. And it's not because they can't learn, but it's because they haven't been given the educational opportunities that they deserve. And the bottom line is our nation isn't living up to a notion it was founded on, the notion of equality. And by recruiting outstanding college graduates, such as yourselves, Teach for America is changing things. Teach for America knows our most effective teachers exhibit characteristics of strong leaders. And as leaders on campus, you can transfer these skills 
into the classroom to offer equal opportunity to all students. By setting ambitious goals for student achievement and working relentlessly to navigate challenges, you can help solve the achievement gap, one student at a time. Adam Roop, who some of you may know, is a 2008 Case graduate and also was USG president in his time here. He's an excellent example of how great leaders can translate into great teachers. For the past two years, he taught second grade at an all boys charter school in Washington, DC. Even though it's our nation capital, Washington, DC school district is one of the lowest performing in the country. But he has many success stories. If you ask him about it, he'll tell you about one student, Antoine, who at the beginning of the year would refuse to pick up a book because he was so far behind other st students in his class. But through Antoine's hard work and Adam's dedication, by the end of the year, Adam had to convince him to stop reading and put away his book so he could go out for recess. Adam, as I said, was in T Washington, DC, but we place our core members in 39 regions across the country, both urban and rural, from New York City to the Mississippi Delta, Colorado, and Los Angeles. And in addition to full salary and benefits, you also receive a $10,000, about $10,000 AmeriCorps grant that can be used to pay off student loans from undergrad or for future educational expenses. And Teach for America takes care of all of your training and certification from the summer, between the summer when you graduate from college and when you start teaching. Um, so no matter what your major, you can apply. And while our core members make an immediate impact in the classroom, many of our 20,000 alumni enter other fields, such as business, law, or medicine, but continue to make decisions that work towards educational equal opportunity. So I've just spoken to you for a few minutes, but there's really a lot more to learn. Um, if you want to check out our website, teachforamerica.org, um, there are a number of upcoming online events, webinars, I'm sure you're familiar with. So some of them are really basic um, about an overview of the program or financial packages, but there's also more specific ones about teaching in specific regions. Um, for seniors who are eligible to apply, we have several application deadlines throughout the year. And the next is upcoming at the end of the month. It's Wednesday, October 27th. Um, so thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, I'll be around at, after GA. So thank you. Any other questions? Any questions now? Clarification for the speaker. Yeah, I just have something real quick. Um, so as a K student, we graduate, we have like $100,000 worth of loans. Uh, besides that ten thousand dollar loan <coughs> that you can get from AmeriCorps, is there any other loan forgiveness? Of um, I mean, a really fast, brief answer. You can put your loans on forbearance, so you, they won't accrue interest. And, but other than the grant, I don't think there's anything straight up that is available. Thank you, Ms. Seymour. Any other announcements this evening? Before you move, um, Elena, if you could have all the flyers ready. Before you leave that door, I want everyone to please grab a flyer and post that single flyer up either on your door or on a very designated area that you're supposed to put up flyers because we're not going to be charged for anything, okay? So Elena, go ahead, please stand by the door and grab a flyer on your way out. Only one per side of a kiosk, please. One last note, if you didn't get a shirt, I have like five over there near the treats, so grab it. Okay.